Hi guys, I'm Sarah Wade. I'm a CA1 anesthesia resident at Medical College of Georgia in Augusta. And I am gonna be walking through the MS MADES acronym for how to set up your anesthesia workspace before uh, at the start of the day before cases. Okay, so to get started, you would first start with the letter M, which stands for machine check. Um, and basically you wanna run through a couple of, of safety checks on your anesthesia machine to be sure it's ready to go for the day. Um, for our machine here, there are a couple different machines that may have different setups, but you wanna remove your oxygen sensor so that can be calibrated. You wanna connect your whole circuit so that you can check for leaks. And then you wanna run the automated tests on your computer screen here. It's actually just four um, separate tests and it literally tells you what to do for each one and then press start and it'll run through and you'll look for a pass sign. Um, if there's any leaks or issues in the circuit, it'll alert you and you can correct them before, before it's time to use your machine. Um, and then you just want to reconnect everything back to your um, original position so that you are ready to use. Our next letter in MS Maze is S for suction. That's pretty straightforward. Um, we have our suction canister here and our um, vacuum uh, dial down at the bottom. So you, I always have mine turned on just so that it's uh, always available as soon as I need it to do. When you need it, you usually need it right away. Um, and I just have it connected to a yank hour tip and then I wedge the tubing in here because the noise is pretty loud. So while I'm not using it, it will stay quiet um, and just have that ready to go. Now our next letter is another M for monitors. Um, typically we start with the EKG leads, which I have around my neck because I'm gonna be placing them on the patient in holding before they actually come back into the room just to save a little time um, and make things more efficient. And then um, other monitors that you're gonna wanna have readily available. Um, I always like to have the cables right next to the bed so I can easily attach to the patient, but it's your oxygen saturation monitor, your um, blood pressure cuff, and your cardiac um, monitor and then a temp probe as well. The next uh, letter in our acronym is A for airway and that's uh, that's a pretty big and important setup as you can imagine. Um, you start with your laryngoscope and you'll choose the size blade for your patient size. You use ET tube with stylet and syringe to inflate the balloon. You always want to make sure your balloon is, is not um, have a leak and leave your syringe handy just so that when you intubate, you'll have it right away. Um, that you will choose that size for your patient as well. It's always nice um, if you have the option to have a standby video um, into the laryngoscope, and this is a McGrath that um, can assist you with intubation if you're having difficulty. So just checking to make sure that is charged and ready to go. Um, Next, we have an oral airway with a tongue depressor, which can help if, you're, if you need it um, with bag mask ventilation. We have a bite block, which we make here just by hand, and that's to prevent the patient from biting down on the tube um, and stopping all ventilation. So this can be placed right after intubation or just before extubation. The temp probe uh, is not really airway, but it kind of is in the face generally because we'll place it in the nose sometimes in the armpit and it just fits nicely to be on your tray here, ready to go. Nasal trumpet is another um, airway device that you can use to prevent um, obstruction if your patient uh, has that problem. So just having that on standby is good. Um, I also have some tegaderms here, which is to protect the eyes. So you wanna, once your patient has and been put to sleep, you wanna put the tegaderm or tape on the eyes to prevent corneal abrasions. And then the last little piece is a heat and moisture exchanger, which you can hook onto your circuit a little bit later after you've gotten everything settled. And that just prevents buildup of moisture and heat in the circuit. Um, so I think that's pretty, oh, and you have your CO2 detector. You wanna make sure that that hooks in right here to your um, circuit. Okay, on to our next letter is I for IV. I always like to start setting up the IV with a clean uh, and fresh bag of LR with the tub tubing attached and primed, ready to connect to an IV if we need it. And then I also have my IV bundle prepared 
and that's just all the supplies in one ready to go for a quick and efficient IV placement. You have your standard kit with a, um, a tourniquet and a um, dressing, some needles of different gauges, your flush syringe and some extra gauze just to have on hand. Um, and then uh, I like to have a roll of tape just to tape it up um, and secure it after it's placed. And that's your IV setup. Um, second to last letter is D for drugs. So um, preparing the drugs is typically starts with just preparing some empty syringes and labeling them. It does take some time just opening and um, labeling. So go ahead and do that you know, ahead of time. And then when you get your drugs, you'll be able to draw them up more quickly. Um, and it depends on the case, which exact medications you'll be using. So this is what I have for my case today, but um, that, that obviously will change. And when I go to the pharmacy and pick up the drugs, then I will actually draw them up and prepare them ahead of time so that they're ready to go. Um, and I also, if I have time, will prepare my syringes for the rest of the day if I know my cases and just have those on standby so it's a quick turnover. And now we're to our last letter of MS Maids, which is S for special. That's kind of a catch-all for any special things you might need for a specific case. That could be things like a art line setup and art line supplies to place it. Um, it could be an ultrasound if you're expecting that you're gonna need ultrasound and guided um, IV access. It could be um, a hotline, which is a setup for transfusing blood if you're anticipating a transfusion. Um, you could, if your patient has a pacemaker, you might be needing a magnet, which is generally available on the carts, or you might need to know or have the defibrillator on standby. If you anticipate a difficult airway, you might wanna have a glide scope in the room. So just different things um, that would be unique to your patient and the case. So that's MS Maids. Um, I hope that it was helpful and uh, gives you a little sense and a little idea of what it's like starting your morning off in anesthesia.